The Bible Treasury. A monthly magazine of papers on scriptural subjects. Volume 20, Article 31. Series 4. Number 6. 1894 and 1895. Gospel Words. 6. The Demoniac Delivered. Matthew 8, Mark 5 verses 1 to 20, Luke 8. There are two very different forms in which the enemy of God and man works, one which may be called extraordinary, the other far more common. It is thus for evil with the spirit that operates in the sons of disobedience, as the Holy Spirit does for good in children of obedience. The history in which the demoniac plays so conspicuous a part illustrates both. The second gospel enters into affecting details of the man's hopeless misery, and of the Savior's gracious power, as the first is more general in the display of a present Jehovah Messiah, taking notice of a second victim as is usual throughout, Matthew 8 verse 28, Matthew 9 verse 27, Matthew 20 verse 30, the least adequate testimony to Israel. Mark and Luke graphically bring before us the more notable of the demoniacs. When the Savior was here, it would seem that Satan put forth his malignant power beyond all example. But a stronger than he was here to overcome him, take from him his whole armor wherein he trusted, and divide his spoils. Immediately, on the Lord's quitting the ship from Capernaum to the other side of the lake, there met him a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling in the tombs. None could bind him, not even with chains. Often as he had been bound with fetters and chains, the chains were rent asunder by him and the fetters shattered, and none had strength to subdue him. Continually by night and day in the tombs and in the mountains was he crying and cutting himself with stones. What a depth of unspeakably wretched and appalling degradation! Matthew adds the fierceness and danger to others, Luke, that for a long time he had worn no clothes. The sight of the Lord Jesus even from afar arrested him, so that he ran and paid him homage, and with a loud voice cried, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, torment me not. For the Lord said, Come forth, unclean spirit, out of the man. Nor was this all, he asked him, What is thy name? And got the answer, My name is Legion, for we are many. There is a fact outside human ken, on the evil side of the spiritual world, beyond measure horrible, a man with such a host of evil spirits in him as could justify the well-known name of a Roman battalion, and a man with a personal consciousness, yet also merging his personality in theirs. Legion, for we are many. But mighty as a spirit is, and especially when in such multitudinous and tyrannical force of evil, demons have no skeptical hardihood. They believe and shudder, James 2 verse 19. Therefore did they beseech that he would not command them to depart into the abyss, for their sure doom was before their eyes, and they knew that when he reigns, they will be cast there, which they dreaded even now. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Is the cry in the first gospel. So, when they begged to enter a great herd of swine feeding on the mountainside, the Lord gave them leave, and the swine, about two thousand, no sooner received the unclean spirits, then they rushed down the steep and were choked in the sea. It was the witness, to all that believe scripture, of the Lord's delivering power on the one hand and of Satan's destructive energy on the other. It is idle here, as everywhere, to confound possession by demons with either lunacy or disease. Either or both might be also, or neither be and yet that possession of evil spirits. The reality was thus transparent. The effect on the swine made the objective fact undeniably plain, and the suggestion of a physical or mental derangement inexcusably false. Nor does the Lord, to whom all belongs below as on high, need the apology of man to justify his permission, any more than for the sickness and death, the plague and the famine, the tempest and the earthquake, which he employs providentially in this fallen world. To what purposes of grace does he not turn every one of these inflictions for such as hear his word so doubtless it was then whether Jews or Gentiles owned the swine? And here we face the more ordinary working of Satan's power. For when the swine herds reported all, the whole city came to meet the Savior and besought him to depart out of their borders. 
They saw the possessed that had the legion sitting, clothed, and sensible, and they were afraid, not of Satan but of the Savior. The witnesses related what explained all as to the demoniac and the swine, but all the people round about began to beseech him to depart. Such is man under Satan's power ever at work, if not so terrific in appearance far more dangerous than the maddening possession in its intensest form, and none is recorded beyond legions. Yet his presence never so acted on their fears, as the proof of the Savior's beneficent power. O oh my readers, are you under the same fatal spell? Do you dread to approach the Lord of all, the Savior for eternity of all who believe? Is it Jesus you dread in your soul? Is it from his grace that you shrink back, lest you should be saved now? Consider your most perilous condition. You are slaves of Satan, children of wrath, enemies of God. What must follow as you are? Death, and judgment. So it is laid up for men as they are. Without faith on your part, baptism and the Lord's Supper, blessed as they are to faith, only aggravate your guilt. There is no Savior but the Lord Jesus, who, once offered to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time, apart from sin, to those that wait for him unto salvation, in contrast with judgment, as he died a sacrifice for their sins. Not such was the state of the delivered demoniac, who besought him that he might be with him. But becoming as the desire might be, the Lord had work for him to do, before that first love is gratified as it surely will be in due season, go to thy house unto thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and showed thee mercy. And he went his way and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus did for him. And he did right, though all were wondering. Alas! Wonder is not faith. Let it not be your lot to fall short of the demoniac. Delivered from the oppressive power of Satan, he was to bear witness of the gracious power of the Lord, even Jesus, shown to himself. But was it not by the hearing to produce faith in souls exposed to Satan in other ways? May you be delivered from the snare that would bid the Lord Jesus to depart. The day is fast approaching when he as king shall sit on the throne of his glory, and say to the faithless nations gathered before him, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels.